come on. Do I even need to say it? We all know there's only one answer. Pure West. Adam West in the original Batman TV series from 1966. Look, there's a reason that most of the other Batman on this list had to reference this one at least once or twice. Rip. Alfred, what are you doing? I miss the 60s. This show looms so large in the Batman mythos that it's unignorable. Almost every Batman to come since the show has set its tone at least partially in response to this show either by trying to go in the opposite direction, or by trying to recapture its magic, sometimes with mixed results. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! I love this show. I had the VHS of a movie as a kid and I watched it incessantly. Adam West was my Batman, and he still is. The man's deadpan delivery of the absurd comic book logic of his world, the grave seriousness with which he treats the silliest nonsense, it's completely unassailable. Yes, it's very possible Mr. Freeze has started another cold wave of terror. Robin, since when do we make public accusations without strong, solid proof? Robin's indiscreet statement is strictly off the record. Not off my record, Batman. I'm sorry, Miss Majors. I certainly wasn't suggesting what your paper should or should not print. I feel like there was a misconception among young people for a long time that this show was accidentally corny, that it's something to be mocked. There's nothing harmless about the Joker, we all know that. Yeah, of course, anyone who actually watches the show can tell that the humor and absurdity is 100% deliberate. It's obvious from the jump. This show hit the ground running with over-the-top nonsense that couldn't be anything but farce. The very first week was about Riddler tricking Batman into arresting him under false pretenses so he could sue Batman. That's not something they built to. That ridiculously convoluted plan is how the series starts. Not trying to kill Batman right away, not like just robbing a bank and fighting Batman, but just trying to get Batman entangled in a frivolous lawsuit. See you in court. <laughs> Oh, it gets better. The second week was about Penguin running out of ideas for a good caper, so he leaves a bunch of fake clues around Gotham City so Batman could quote unquote solve them and figure out Penguin's plan. Then Penguin could steal the idea from Batman. It's like crime's only worth doing for Penguin if he's committed to his role as a master criminal. He's not just gonna rob a bank. He needs to do something so big that only Batman can think of it. Batman's not only going to pick my crime, he is going to provide me with a blueprint as to how I should pull it off. Penguin, are you sure you haven't gone stir crazy? But now that the show is more widely available, it's better understood among young people that this show is a farce, a deliberate comedy, and everything you think you're making fun of in it is actually a joke the show itself is making. And more often than not, the joke it's making is much funnier than the joke you're making about it. Everyone remembers the shark repellent gag from the movie. It's probably the joke most remembered and most referenced by other comedic takes on Batman. But I feel like some people referencing the shark repellent lose sight of the fact that it's just one of several Ocean Life specific bat sprays and they're on the bat copter. Not the bat boat, which is also in this movie. They're on the bat copter. We are to believe that this Batman is so absurdly prepared for any situation that he's ready to fight off any form of ocean life in the sky. And they didn't just add them to the copter at the last minute because they knew their target was a yacht. The Batcopter was at the airport, ready to go, with ocean life repellent sprays at the ready, already, just in case at some point in the future, Batman happened to take the helicopter near water. That is so much funnier than any joke that has ever made fun of this show. Now, of course, there are plenty of people who do understand this show and still don't enjoy it, and, you know, fair enough. It was arguably a lack of respect for the source material that drove William Dozier to make this show a comedy. I was a little taken aback because I had never had a Batman comic book in my hands. I, of course, was aware that there was such a thing, but I'd never read one. So then after a day or so, the fairly obvious idea, it seems obvious now at least, to 
make it so square and so serious and so cliche ridden and so overdone and yet do it with a certain elegance and style that it would be funny that it would be so corny and so bad that it would be funny. And if you like Batman as a serious character, you might not be thrilled that the longtime most prominent take on Batman doesn't take him even remotely seriously. And you know what? Fair enough. It's possible that the only reason I enjoy the show so much is that this was my first Batman, so I didn't have attachment to the source material beforehand. But just knowing me and how much I appreciate a good laugh, I feel like even if I did like Serious Batman before this show came out, this show is so funny that I would still enjoy it anyway, no matter how I felt about the source material. This show did not invent the idea of sneaking in jokes for the parents that fly over the kids' heads. Rocky and Bullwinkle had only wrapped up a few years earlier, and hell, Looney Tunes was doing it for decades. But this show might have perfected it by making the things that are hilarious to the parents the very same things that are exciting to the children. One of my favorite critics, uh, the reviewer said that in the middle of the show, his 11-year-old boy said, Daddy, stop laughing, this is serious. Every ridiculous trap that the hammy villains played by megastar celebrity guests would catch Batman and Robin in could fill kids with genuine suspense while their parents laugh their asses off at the absurdity. Every overly specific bat gadget, every illogical riddle, every gorgeous woman who even passes through Gotham just falling madly in love with a man whose face she can barely even see. All this stuff made Batman cool to the kids and hilarious to the grown-ups. Oh, how do I know? I know because I was one of those young children who thought this Batman was the coolest Batman. And to make sure the parents would be happy, this show goes out of its way to make this Batman the most positive role model for youngsters imaginable. So kids who want to grow up to be like Batman would always know to do the right thing. Watch it, chump. Put us in safety. Oh, sure. Sorry. And parents could once again be genuinely happy their kids are learning these lessons while still laughing at just how over the top and heavy handed the execution of these lessons would be. Robin, you haven't fastened your safety back belt. We're only going a couple of blocks. It won't be long until you're old enough to get a driver's license, Robin. Then you'll be able to drive the Batmobile and other vehicles. Remember, motor is safety. Gosh, Batman, when you put it that way... I love it. It makes the moral shoehorned into the Weird Al show look subtle. Admittedly, not every one of these morals for kids has exactly held up. Support your police. That's our message. Well said, Robin. I mean, yes, the show does depict the police as completely incompetent, but... Turns out depicting them as well-meaning is the most ridiculous part of this show. Lego Batman may be the ultimate Batman parody, but Adam West is the ultimate Batman, period. This show eclipsed the comic books it was spoofing to become the definitive cultural conception of the Bat. And honestly, the show was so popular that it revived interest in the comics. It is entirely possible that without this show, we would not know Batman today. He might have fallen into obscurity like so many other short-lived comic characters had this show not made him the most popular hero on TV. And that's why I think fans of Batman, even fans mostly of darker Batman stories, should appreciate the show's existence, even though I totally understand why they might resent this show. I mean, I'd be grumpy too if most of the world only knew of Tolkien through this scene. Where there's a whip, we don't want to go to war today. No, who am I kidding? No, I wouldn't. That would be awesome. But the fact remains, I understand why someone who likes Batman as a serious character would resent the fact that because of the show, the world sees Batman as a joke. I'm sorry you can't appreciate the joke the way I do, but I hope you can appreciate that because of this show, the world knows Batman at all. So when Tim Burton's Batman was in development, fans of the comic were devastated that Michael Keaton was going to play the role. The comedian as Batman, have they learned nothing? Fans of the comics didn't want the movie to just be the TV show again, full of winks and nods and... Then of course the movie came out and well, as history has proven, the movie did have a wink and nod to the TV show. Jack Napier, named after Alan Napier, who had passed away shortly before filming. Hey, they almost went way less subtle with it. The filmmakers even considered casting West and Julie Newmar as Thomas and Martha, 
but they decided against it, probably for the best, because fans of the show wouldn't like seeing them get shot, and people who weren't fans of the show wouldn't like seeing them, period. But hey, that meant that that Brave and the Bold episode was free to do that years later. But overall, Burton's movie was, of course, the dark and gritty Batman, until all those darker and grittier ones in the decades to follow. The fans rejoiced. Batman was saved until it wasn't. That is a... But the TV show looms so large in Batman history that every new Batman movie and series owes its existence on some level to the show, but it also has to react to the tone of the show, either by trying to match it or by trying to go against it. I'm vengeance. Whether comedic or serious, every single Batman put to film since the 60s is at least in part a reaction to Adam West. Fortunately, before his passing, Adam got to react to the reactions with a chance to parody the Batman that came after him. We run away to Europe together, sip tea in a cafe, and live happily ever after. Holy unsatisfying ending. That's right, there was a reunion movie. Actually, there were multiple reunion movies. This one we may unpack another time, but for the purposes of this discussion, we're talking about this reunion movie, Return of the Caped Crusaders, which reunited the voices of Adam West, Burt Ward, and Julie Newmar with the best soundalikes they could get for the rest of the cast. And in some cases, the soundalikes are arguably bigger names than the original actors they're subbing for. It's the bat signal, sir. I can't come up with anything either, Batman. The movie recreates the aesthetic of the 1966 series in animation as best they can, but it gives it a story that, without spoiling any details, leads the sweet, lovable 66 Batman to embody the more fascist -y, gritty Batman. <laughs> but it's still filtered through that Adam West lens, and it's kind of great to see the goodiest of goody two-shoes version of Batman become his version of the joyless tyrant. Mr. Mayor, the city no longer requires your ineffective management. You're relieved from office. Ugh. But hey, he finally made a point of holding the police accountable. You know, in that G-rated storybook way. Watching television while on the job? I certainly don't condone that, Commissioner. Oh, uh, of course, Batman. So sorry, we were just, uh... It's not me you need to apologize to. It's the law-abiding taxpayers of Gotham City. Everyone has their own opinions on which Batman are best, and yes, I have enjoyed my fair share of serious Batman movies, too. But Adam West will always be my Batman. When I was a kid, I thought he was the best because he was so cool. And now that I'm grown, I think he's the best because he's so funny. And yeah, not everybody agrees. In fact, not everybody agrees on every Batman. Even the serious Batman, there's plenty of debate among the serious Batman fans which one is the best. But there is one Batman that most of the fans do agree on. And I think he put it best when talking about Adam West. You know, as a kid, I used to watch it with my father. The Grey Ghost was my hero. Really? And he still is. 